My goal for the marathon is simply to finish the marathon. I love listening to podcasts, so we'll see. I'm manifesting that one. I am definitely balling on a budget right now. Welcome or welcome back. I am here for a very casual sit down Q&A that I have been meaning to film for a while. I'm just going to try and rapid fire out as many questions as I possibly can. I pulled these from my Instagram story where I asked you guys to ask me questions, pulled them from TikTok and YouTube comments. The ones that I really just get the most, I'm gonna try to knock out an answer. I don't have a couch yet in my apartment, so we're sitting on my beanbag. It's going to be a very casual, chill, Q and A, and I'm just gonna try and rapid fire through them. If you are new to the channel, welcome. I am Vicky. I am a corporate nine to five gal who also runs quite a bit and is really into fitness and healthy lifestyle content. And I pretty much vlog all of my days either here or on TikTok. And I just recently moved to New York City, fulfilled one of my biggest dreams and goals. So I am taking you all along for the journey. So hopefully this Q&A kind of knocks out most of the questions you might have if you're just new to this channel or if you've been watching for a while, just clarifying some things that you might be a little confused about. Also, I really need to get my nails done, but we're gonna just excuse that. So I'm gonna categorize these questions and we're gonna start off with kind of the life ones. Why did you move to New York City or why did you wanna move to New York City and why now? So I've been wanting to move to New York City since as long as I can remember. I went on a trip to New York in high school, early high school, and I fell in love with it. I've always known I wanted to live in a big city. And then post-college, I got a job at Nike out of the pandemic was still very much going on. There was not a lot of opportunity to move and I felt really secure in that job. So I was like, I'm gonna stay in Portland and take that. So I haven't really had the opportunity to yet and it was always on my mind. I was constantly visiting and I made every trip out here that I could and I just knew I wanted to make it happen. Then I had some life changes go on in the fall of last year and it was a really big opportunity for me to kind of step into this new chapter on my own. And Elise opened up in my best friend's apartment building and I was like, I have to hop on that. So that is kind of how we got here. I also have a full video about moving to New York and my apartment tour already up on my channel. So it kind of goes into more depth over there. I will link that down below. Leading into the next question is, do you love New York as much as you thought? Or are you having second thoughts? Or how do you feel about the move so far? So it's been like less than a month, but I can say that I feel so sure in my decision to move here. I am so 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 happy i love my apartment i love where i live i just love everything about it so much and it is exactly what i thought it was going to be i'm just so happy that i took the risk because it was really scary i'm completely on my own i mean my best friend does live in the building but i don't have any family here i left my dog i left my parents and everything that i knew behind there was a lot of anxiety about the move i felt like you know if i move there and hate it am i gonna regret it am i gonna regret this am i gonna regret that and there was a lot of fear and i'm just so happy to say that i have no regrets and i'm so happy right now and I truly am obsessed with my apartment and I'm just so excited to keep filming content in here and giving you guys updates, especially when this freaking couch comes because that is going to be a very exciting day. Will you be getting a pet in New York or is Alfie coming with you? So Alfie is my dog back at home. I'll insert a photo of him. He is just the cutest dog in the whole world. And I got him when I was in high school, but my parents didn't let me get a dog until I was in high school. And then I graduated and went to U of O for college and my parents kind of ended up taking care of him because I was away. So he is very, very much attached to my parents. So I was not going to move him out here with me. And he also has pretty bad anxiety. And I think he would absolutely hate the city. He does not thrive in busy, sirens blaring environment. He is a suburb dog through and through. Even like the UPS delivery driver scares him. So he's not coming with me, but I might be getting a pet in the future. I would love to get a cat, but I have a lot of upcoming travel in the next few months through the summer. So I'm hoping once that settles down in the fall, I will be able to hopefully 
get a cat. I don't know if I want a cat or a kitten. Stay tuned to see if I get a kitten. The next set of questions was pretty common is are you going to share your experience about being single versus being in a relationship for so long, etc, etc. I've touched on this on my TikTok kind of about privacy and what I choose to share and that part of my life is very private and I want to keep it that way. So if you're here for the tea, I'm so sorry, but this is not the video for you. Um, there was no bad blood, so I don't have anything bad to say. That's that. I don't really have anything to share, but I am out here on my own. So I'm sure I will be sharing about what it's like to make friends in the city and just like not be so on your own when you are living alone because I know that is a really big life shift for a lot of people, especially post-grad. I used to live next to all of my best friends and now I luckily do live next to one, but it's still really difficult, like just not having a sense of community. So I'm hoping to do some more videos on what it's like to live alone and how to make it a little bit better. Although I do love living alone. I absolutely thrive being by myself and I, I I love it. I could sit in this beanbag chair all day and probably not talk to anyone except for my mom who I call like seven times a day, so. Can you share more about your favorite foods or places to go in New York? I'm planning a trip and I really want to make it a good one. I have a Eats with Vic Instagram and it has a guide on New York City and all of my favorite places that I've eaten so far and I update it quite regularly. So if you're looking for recommendations on where to eat, I would go there. For things to do, I don't feel quite qualified to share yet, but that's part of my content plan is to get out and explore New York and find things that are really fun to do that don't cost a lot of money because it can get very expensive here. Which brings me to my next question is how am I budgeting? I am definitely balling on a budget right now. I am trying to reduce my spending in certain areas such as eating out. I love eating out, but I'm reserving it for the weekends and I'm reserving it for like occasions or if I'm with friends because during the week, I'm getting groceries and I'm eating in and I've been really good about it so far and I'm really proud of myself because I feel like that is a big spend area for me. I don't drink alcohol so that doesn't get expensive but then I just like shell out so much money on eating out. Like I would order Chipotle, Cava, Sweet Green but I'm like I can make this at home. So I've been really trying to just kind of shrink my spending a little bit and really be mindful about where I'm putting my money and most of my money goes towards food and the other goes towards travel, which brings me to my next question is what are my future travel plans? I have quite a few trips coming up this next year. My best friends are getting married. There's bachelorette trips, there's wedding trips. I'm gonna be in San Diego, I'm gonna be in Arizona, I'm gonna be in California. Then I'm taking a cruise in August. Like there's a lot going on. And so I need to be saving my pennies where I can and then I use my credit card points and some other air miles to kind of book these trips. And that is where I spend the most money. I absolutely love traveling. It is my number one favorite thing to do. So I do kind of shell out more money there. Okay, switching over to kind of like work stuff, work being in two parts, my nine to five job and then my content creation job. So how did you get started on TikTok? So I randomly started posting on TikTok during the pandemic, pretty much like everybody else. And my page actually started more so with food reviews and what I eat in a days and then some travel content. I was going to Disney a lot, so I was sharing like eats and things of that nature. And then when I started going back into the office, I started sharing my work life and now it has morphed into pretty much everything. I am a big believer in not having to niche down. I know everybody on TikTok talks about you have to find your niche. I don't believe in that. I share whatever I would like to share from my morning routines to running, what it's like working a nine to five, office life, work from home life, food, literally everything because that is what is authentic to me. I'm not gonna niche down and only share about one thing. I'll share about my favorite books and etc. So if that resonates with you at all, feel free to follow along for the journey because I definitely do not just have one category. I'm one of those people that just likes a lot of different things and will share all of the different things. I'm not super rigid in what I share and when I share it. It just goes up when it goes up and I don't have any set like plans or anything really because that's what makes it fun is taking the pressure off i don't put pressure on myself be like i have to post every day or i have to post this three times a week or i have to get this up and 
taking the pressure off makes it a lot more fun and it's the same with brand partnerships i am so grateful for every single brand that wants to work with me and i only say yes to brands that i genuinely love and i think that my audience will love because there's nothing i hate more than seeing influencers post brands that they just simply do not use and probably will not use and are just doing it for the check and maybe i'm in a different position because i do have another form of income coming from my corporate job and maybe i would have a different opinion if i didn't have that salary but that really grinds my gears so if you see anything on here that is sponsored just know that i'm actively using that product and really do back it so i'm just putting that one out there that being said if there's specific content that you like love and want to see more of please share because i would love to hear thoughts and feedback on what you want me to share going forward what are my content creation plans so i am obviously sharing a lot more on youtube which i love because now that i have a little bit more time I love the ability to share more long form content. TikTok can really get difficult because I feel like I have like 60 seconds before people stop paying attention and you just have to get your point across very quickly. And I just really love the long form content on here. I've also thought about a podcast, but I think maybe I'll put that on hold until a little bit later on. I would absolutely love to start one though because I love listening to podcasts. So. We'll see, I'm manifesting that one. Continuing on with the content creation questions, when do you edit your videos? I always see your daily vlogs go up and I'm so curious when you find the time to edit. So if I'm posting like a morning routine or an evening routine, I'll typically just like film in the morning, quickly edit it and then get it up before I start work. I edit an InShot and then I just upload it to TikTok, add the captions and any links that I need. And I've gotten into such a routine with it that it doesn't take me very long. If I'm doing like a full daily vlog, sometimes it'll take a little bit longer to edit. And then YouTube is kind of a different story. I've worked with an editor, I still am. She's amazing, especially for videos where I just do not have the time to edit them. So I have been passing that off to an editor. And then some vlogs, I'll be able to just edit myself if I have a little bit more time at work, but it's definitely a balance. It's really difficult to work the nine to five and be a great employee because that's what I strive to be while also doing this, but I love them both. And so I just struggle with the balance sometimes, but we get it done. And I love sharing on social media in all forms because I feel like I've built such a cool community. And there's so many of you that watch my videos every single day and are always there to comment. And it just like really keeps me going. So I really do love sharing, although it can get really hectic sometimes. Switching over to the nine to five side of things, I got some questions on if my job has changed since moving. So my job is the same. I'm um, lucky enough to have a very supportive manager and we're kind of working through flexible schedule right now. So my hours kind of vary. We do have some teammates that are kind of spread out across the country. So I've been able to work in the mornings and then I'm always on during our core hours and getting our meetings in. And then in the afternoons, Sometimes I can log off at five Eastern time and then other times I'm working later, but I fully committed to my team and the work. So whatever needs to get done gets done, but it really hasn't been bad, especially because I do live on my own. I have my own space and I can kind of get away with working from wherever, whether it be this beanbag or my desk. And I'm not like worried about bothering anyone or being on a call uh, early or late in the evening. So it has worked out really well. And as far as the remote, I have been going back to Portland. I went back after I moved for some key work meetings and I'll be going back once more in April. But after that, I don't really have any plans to go back to Portland. I think I will probably go into the New York office if I want or feel like doing so. It's not required, but it's definitely a fun office to go to. So I might go and that'll be some fun content um, just for a change of scenery, but it's not necessarily required. I have some other videos on my TikTok about working and things of that nature. So you can definitely check those out. And then I got asked about my career goals and my career goal, sometimes I think I would just like to not work, but that's everyone's career goal. So for right now, I'm really happy with the path that I'm on in human resources. I'm really enjoying the work that I'm doing. It is not the most exciting. It's not the most glamorous, but it is work that feels fulfilling to me. It tickles my brain in the right ways in terms of like getting tasks done and doing those things. And I do see a lot of career growth opportunities to kind of get to that like HR business partner level. So 
that's it for right now. I don't have a lot of like set in stone goals because you just never know what's gonna happen. So I'll never say never, I'll never turn down an opportunity and I just take things as they come. So right now I'm really enjoying being an HR coordinator and we'll see what's to come. If you wanna see how I actually got started at Nike as an intern, I have a full video already up on my channel. It is a Q and A all about that. So there is much more detail there to share. The next chunk of questions are about running and fitness. What is my next race plan? So I am running a 10K in Central Park in June and I really want to focus on speed for that race. So we'll see, I have not raced a 10K. I've run 10Ks, but I haven't raced one. So I'm hoping to go out hard and fast, honestly, because then after that, I'll be transitioning into marathon training for the New York City Marathon in November. And that is probably not going to be very speed focused. My goal for the marathon is simply to finish the marathon. I do not have a time goal. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I just wanna cross the finish line healthy and happy. After the 10K speed is done, I'm gonna be transitioning into marathon training through the summer and getting into November. So that is kind of my 2023 next race plans. And then I also got questions about how I got into running and the best tips for beginners. I am planning to do an entire video about this, but I got into running during the pandemic like many, and it was because my family signed up for a Disney 5K and then the 5K got canceled because of the pandemic, but I kept training and I ended up running the 5K anyway. And from there, I just caught the running bug. I loved how it made me feel. I loved the training process. I loved seeing the improvement from my very first run to the race day that I did on my own. And it is crazy to see how far you can come by being consistent. And even now I'll look back on runs that I used to do. I'm like, wow, you know, five miles to me was like my long run. And now I can wake up in the morning on a Monday and just run five miles. And it's kind of like a base quick, quick run for me. And it's just so wild to see how you progress. And so that's what I love about running is it's up to you. And if you put in the work, you're gonna get out so much result. And in terms of beginner tips, start slow and give yourself so much grace. And when I say start slow, I mean like literally walk jog if you have to, it's okay to walk. I went out and I just said, okay, I'm just gonna run one mile. I don't care how long it takes me. And I did that for like a few weeks. So I was just like, I'm just gonna run a mile a couple times a week and see how it makes me feel. Then I went to kind of a time-based goal. Okay, I'm gonna run for 15 minutes. I'm gonna run for 20 minutes. There's a lot of training plans out there. It can be very overwhelming, but I'm a big proponent of not spending a lot of money because running can get expensive, but it doesn't have to be. You need to invest in a good pair of shoes. And if you want to get a watch of some sort, you can, but it's not like necessary. You can use your phone for a while. Don't invest until you know that you're actually gonna wanna get into it. But the shoes, the shoes are key because if you're running on bad shoes, you're gonna hate it because it's gonna hurt. You gotta get your running shoes from a running store, go get fitted. Do not listen to me or any other running influencer on the internet when they share their favorite shoes because their favorite shoes may not work for you. You gotta go get fitted. So those are my two like beginner tips, but I have tons more tips on my TikTok under the running playlist. So you can definitely check those out. Do you still have the Peloton tread or the bike in New York? So I don't have a Peloton tread or bike. I've been using the app which has been so amazing and I would recommend it to anyone. After I moved out of my apartment in Portland, I sold the bike and have just been using my parents who had it downstairs. And then when I moved here, I just used the app exclusively because I'm lucky to have an apartment gym that has a bike and a treadmill. So I just prop my phone up on both of them and then I take the classes through the app. I would say if you're just starting out, I would do the free trial with Peloton and start with that. Don't invest in the bike or the tread unless you know you really love it and you're gonna use it. They are incredible pieces of equipment, but they are really expensive. So I wouldn't say dive right into getting one of them right away. You wanna make sure you like the classes, you like the format, you like the instructors. So you can do this on any treadmill or any bike of your choice and then you just prop up the app on your phone and they even have outdoor runs. So if you wanted to take a Peloton class outside, they have audio only outdoor runs. Those are great too. So I would definitely say do a trial run and then invest. And a lot of people are asking me if I thought I was gonna get the biker tread. 
right now because I have a gym in my apartment I don't feel like I need to buy one and I also have a class pass membership so I've been going to other studios to do fitness classes around the city so I don't really feel like I'm gonna get one right now that might change I also don't really want one in my apartment I think it would take up a lot of room so for right now I'm using the app and I'm using class pass can you talk about the process of booking a live Peloton Studios class yes so Peloton releases their live studio classes one month in advance every Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern time. And all of this information is on their website. But if you wanna book a live class, you have to be on the website. I typically log in like 20 minutes before on Thursdays. And then you just have to have a credit already bought. I believe it's $35 for a class there. And you have to be logged into your account and then you refresh right at 12. And you just have to not hesitate. You just have to find the class that you think you want or select an instructor and just hit checkout. There's probably a very slim chance that you'll get to book more than one class. I think there's actually a limit on how many you can book, but I would just say do not hesitate. For me, last time I booked it, I refreshed, I found Cody's um, class and I just hit book and that was it. You can't hesitate. You have to already be logged in and you have to have the credit already bought in your account. It makes things go so much faster, but spots do up, do fill up really quickly. I have a vlog about the last time I went to a Cody ride in person. It is so much fun. I will say if you're visiting New York, one of the things to do, if you love fitness and Peloton, I would try to go to a live class because it is such a fun experience. And I will be back in the Peloton studios next month. My dad and I are actually taking a class together, so I will vlog that, but it has been so much fun. I think that is all the questions I'm going to answer for today. If you have more questions, feel free to leave me a comment down below. You can DM me on Instagram or ask me in a question box when I put it on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for all of the support so far on this move to New York and this move to YouTube. I am so excited for more videos to come. Also, let me know what type of content you want to see from me and be sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe here so you do not miss a video. And I will be back with another video very soon. Bye.